Hey everybody, this is Pamphlewire LLC, and let that sink in with Maya Moham. Okay, welcome Maya. Hey Eric, how's it going? It's going good. It's going good. Um, yeah, so let's. Uh, I'm gonna get started. I'm gonna do a little a brief little intro. I'm gonna get Anthony to do a brief little intro, and then we're gonna go and uh, and, and get to you. Uh, cool. My name is Eric Ziegler. I'm a sync licensing agent for Pamphlewear LLC. I uh, take the library that we have here at Pamphlewear, and I find um, uh, communicate with music supervisors and uh, showrunners, producers, and find a, find a home for the music that we that we have. Anthony. Yes, yes. Hey, this is Anthony Ferrier, um, owner of Pamphlewear LLC. About three years ago, I pivoted my IT consulting company into a music publishing company. I figured music, tech, sure, why not? Peanut butter and jelly. And we've been having fun. Um, Eric has been helping us with the sync agency side. We've been doing music publishing. And we are meeting a lot of cool folks on Clubhouse like Maya. So this is going to be great. Thank you, Maya, for visiting. Okay, thank you, Anthony. All right, yeah, welcome, Maya. Um, yeah, if you can go ahead and give like a brief, a brief intro of yourself to start out with. Uh, yeah, sure. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Maya. Maya Moham. Um, I am a singer-songwriter um, and sync professional, working at music. Working as a music coordinator right now over at um, APMG, um, assisting and managing the catalog for Jingle Punks, Five Alarm, and Cavendish over there. Um, really just got into sync in the last, I want to say, uh, two years. Um, kind of just started diving in probably right around the same time, Eric, you did. So like early March. Um, but I've been songwriting for about, I would say seriously, for about three years um, and singing pretty much my entire life. Mm -hmm. Oh, and I'm based in Los Angeles, California. Perfect. Thank you for that. And yeah, so let's let's go off of um, that. Well, tell us about the your journey into music. Like, how did it all start? Like, go back. Let's go way back to the beginning. Oh, wow. OK. Um, <laughs> Uh, I mean, I guess I've, I've always felt really attached to music. Um, I think like, you know, even as a young kid, I, I think I primarily started out with singing and, um, you know, I, I definitely just kind of came out of the womb singing and uh wouldn't shut up <laughs> Sh shared a wall with my brother who um was constantly very irritated by that but um you know it it really i feel like defined my formative years and has made me who i am today i uh you know i, I struggle a lot i feel like with um growing up like with my identity just because I grew up in a place that was very, it was, it was very like upper crust Caucasian. There weren't a lot of people that were, you know, of color or even Iranian around where I grew up. Um, and so I, I definitely had a lot of challenges there with, you know, kind of figuring out my place, my place in the world. And, um, and I feel like music has always been a really important part in helping me kind of find myself. So, so yeah, to circle back to your question, pretty much has been, um, you know, something that I've um, valued a lot um, and had in my life for most of my life. Um, and I did start out in performing, um, similar to you, Eric. Um, and then I just got to a point, you know, shortly before the pandemic where I decided, you know, what do I really want for my life? And 
when I asked myself that question and really asked myself that, it, it came back to, you know, I want music to be, um, I, I want music to be everything that I do, um, whether that is creative or business, um, ideally both. So. Wow. Yeah, no, thank you for that. Yeah, because it's, so I guess you found out, you found that, that when you, or especially with like singing and with you know uh, writing music, it it gives you your own brand, your own identity, and kind of you know um, gets you comfortable with yourself in a way. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and I think music just is one of those rare things that we have that connects everyone. It sounds so cheesy, and I feel like we've heard that so many times over and over again. But it really is that thing that I feel like crosses barriers. Um, and it's helped me find community in so many different ways, um, along with helping me kind of discover myself as well. Yeah, very, very true. Yeah, it, and you know, that is the amazing thing about music is that like, no matter what language you speak, what culture you're from, uh, you know, it can, it, it kind of dissolves those barriers. And because I mean, everybody listens to music, everybody loves to, to, to hum or to, to, to sing along or to dance to music. Um, it's something that, you know, regardless of, of where you are, it's, it's something that, that you can identify with. It's something that you can really, you know, um, have in your life. I don't think I've ever met anybody who, who doesn't like music. Uh -huh. Like yeah. I've been thinking about this for a long time, like a really long time. Have I ever met anybody who doesn't like music like that? No, I can't. I can't think of anybody ever. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I feel like, um, you know, I still think it's something that is undervalued in our society. Um, but somebody had mentioned something to me earlier last week. No, earlier this week, um, I went to a LA songwriting collective um, over in North Hollywood and someone had said, you know, what would happen if every songwriter just collectively pulled all of their music off of streaming sites, off of, you know, media everywhere, radio, um, what would, what would the world look like even for a day? What would it look like without any music? And, you know, the truth is it's, I feel like when you think of it that way, it's like one of our main needs as human beings. Oh yeah. Yeah, uh, if that happened, it, you know, if everybody just pulled everything, I, I mean, it, <laughs> I think, and I don't think I'm exaggerating here, I think it would, you know, um, go into turmoil. I think the world would, would kind of, would, would start, would start, you know, crumbling and, and I, yeah. I, think, I don't think it's, I don't think it's hyperbole to say that, yeah, like everything would come crashing down in a, in a, in a way. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And um, so you talked a little bit about, about your background, about your culture. Do you think that like your culture, um, you know, uh, with Iranian culture, do you think that had any influence growing up uh, on your creative process now or like how, how you write songs now? Yeah, I mean, um, you know, I think it's still a process for me. I think it's definitely something that I want to pull into my artist's work a lot more. Um, I think it, I think there has been some very positive things that have come out of having such a rich culture. And then there's also things that I feel like have um, just made my journey like a little more challenging. Um, there's like a, a joke and, and I'm sure this applies to other cultures as well. I'm sure it's not limited to Iranian culture, but um, there's a joke that a lot of um, Iranians my age have um, when they think about their families and like what their family expectations are. Um, and it's basically that um, when you're Iranian, your parents look at you and they say, you are either a lawyer, doctor, engineer, or you live on the street. Um, <laughs> so, in that regard, it's definitely been um, it's definitely been a challenge to, you know, f 
assert myself and find my own independence and, um, you know, again, back to the thing of like asking myself what I want. Um, but in terms of like bringing the cultural elements of it into music, um, I definitely think it's played a part. I, you know, some of the, my parents even have some early footage of me singing, um, Iranian songs, very old Iranian music. Um, and then also, I mean, even just globally, um, some of the best poetry in the world has come from Iran. Um, Hafez is one of the most well-known poets of all time. And, um, you know, I did read some of that growing up, and I'm sure that that has also played a part in, at the very least, how I look at the world um, and, and my writing as well, um, although that's, you know, still in process too, so... So yeah. Excellent answer. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, yeah. Yeah. And so just before I forget, just to you know get this out of the way, uh, what uh, what PRO are you, are you currently with? I'm currently with BMI. Okay. And was there mm -hmm. any reason for going with uh, BMI versus like ASCAP? Um, it was purely that that was the first PRO that I had heard of. <laughs> Okay. Okay. I mean, that, I mean, that's, that, does, that does happen, you know, especially when you're, especially when you're just starting out, uh, in regards to, you know, getting your music, getting the, um, the, you know, the business side and the legal side of, of your music taken care of, you know, it, it, there's so much that you have to do. It, it can be kind of just like, okay, you know, which, which PR do I even, do I go with it? Um, and you're kind of in a rush and it's kind of, um, okay, BMI, but have you, have you, looked at um ASCAP have you since you've signed up have you like gotten gone back and and looked and compared and contrasted yeah I've definitely considered um looking at other PROs um I I definitely have to do more research for sure um and maybe this is something that like we could actually have a later conversation about as well um but I think the you know I, I've thought about if it would be a challenge to have another PRO with, um, you know, I, I have signed up my publishing through BMI as well. I don't know if that creates any complications if I was to like go forward with different songs and register them with other PROs or not. Um, but yeah, that is, that is definitely something that um, I need to do more research on. Oh yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't, believe it would create so, so many you know complications if you just have different songs with different PROs it's obviously like easier if you just have them all with BMI or have them all with ASCAP um mm -hmm. but I will say that the the one thing I I do here is um when you're an artist and you're deciding especially if you're deciding between different artist names do not use different artist names with different PROs like do not mm -hmm. like because that that will really get everything convoluted as far right. as songs though may, maybe not so much uh anthony i don't know if you had any input on that you may not <laughs> <laughs> all right but um yeah so you did um you did talk about uh uh you know getting in the sink in the past two years uh was there anything uh was there any particular uh event or thing that kind of that kind of got you started in sync. Was there any project, movie, TV show, advertisement uh, that you that really stuck out to you, and you're like, "Wow, I need to get into this more. I need to start looking into this more." Well, I feel like I've always been very um, enamored by music in television and film. Um, I think one of my, probably one of my earliest memories of wondering who was responsible for, you know, working in that space was the film 500 Days of Summer um, and listening to that soundtrack and falling in love with Regina Spector. Um, and there's just this, particularly there's this one really incredible scene um, where they do a split, split, excuse me, split screen of, um, with Joseph Gordon-Levitt and it shows this expectations versus reality situation. Um, and it's set to this really beautiful song by Regina Spector called Hero. Um, 
and I just loved the balance that that struck. You were getting a certain level of depth from what you were seeing, and then this whole other array of depth that just stretched even further with the music. Um, and so I think since then, I'd always had a curiosity about it. Um, I started my professional career in television production. Um, so yeah, I feel like music and, um, you know, media has just kind of always been something that I've been really interested in. Um, but I think I had a lot of hesitations and a lot of just my own, for lack of a better word, growing up to do. Um, and again, that ties back to looking in the mirror and just saying, you know, what do I really want? And um, shortly before the pandemic, I had just wrapped on a, on a show. Um, and I just, you know, felt like it was the right time for me to really be honest with myself and ask myself that question. Um, and at the time, I had a friend that was working with um, Jen Ross on uh, Zoe's Extraordinary Playlist. And I talked to her about it, and I just said, you know, I'm really interested in sync. I feel like this is something I've always been interested in, but I've just been too afraid to voice it or, you know, too hesitant or whatever. And, um, you know, I feel like my journey kind of started there. She introduced me to the Guild. Um, I got to um, be a production assistant at the last in-person Guild Award show. Um, which, funny enough, kind of felt like a full circle moment because Regina Spector was performing at that um, at that Guild show because she did a song for um, Bombshell. Um, but yeah, I'm sorry, I keep going in like circles. No, did I sort of answer your question there? No, no, you're 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 good. You're good. This is about this is about you. You know. Uh, yeah. You know. Uh, Talk as, as as much as you want. You know, go go as far or as close to the question as as you want. This is about you. No worries. Um, that is really really cool though that it kind of went everything went full circle. Um, you know, with with Regina Spector like going with the you know with ending with the uh with the last in person uh, Guild Music Supervisors uh event. Like that's that's really that's really that's really awesome. You know this um this life this uh. <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna get philosophical for a millisecond. This life, mm -hmm. this universe um, that we live, it, it has unusual, but beautiful, um, you know, ways about it. And that, with that example right there, it really is. And I feel like there, there are so many things I feel like are out of our control. But it, there's this really interesting thing I think that happens when you set your mind to something. Um, and not just say it, but like really believe it um, and put it out in the world. Again, now I sound philosophical over here, um, <laughs> but I feel like there, there's something to that. Um, yeah, and, and I, I feel like, even like with us meeting too, like I felt like that was a serendipitous moment. I've had a lot of serendipitous moments, I feel like over the last two years, just in putting my mind to it. Um, to sync and, um, you know, really focusing in on what I want. Um, and I think that's just a, a really powerful thing, but I, I, it definitely is something that you have to initiate in yourself. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, very true. You need, yeah, you need to believe in it and you need to start taking steps to go and actually and do it as well. You need to be full force. You need to be, you know, um, towards it. If, if you, if you if you lay um, if you start laying the stones, the path will be revealed. That kind of thing. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Okay, and so when you're when you're um, when you're writing um, or you're performing, that's it could actually go either way. Uh, what is something that you do um, to kind of uh, get around any kind of uh, well, we get you know. Uh, roadblock or um you know like rut what is something that that you kind of when you find yourself in a creative rut like how do you usually uh try and get yourself out of it hmm that's a really good question um and I think it's honestly something that I'm still learning and um it really just depends 
on the situation. Um, I've been collaborating a lot more over the past couple years, um, just because of the ease of being able to do it over Zoom. I've, it's just really ramped up. Um, and I'm learning a lot of things from different people and kind of adapting um, you know, different strategies for it. I think like an overarching one that I feel like can apply to most writing situations or I mean, maybe performing, but I would say more so writing is knowing when to take a break, like knowing when to step away from something um, if you're really hitting a wall. Um, because I think there is something to like your brain telling you, okay, that you need a break. Like you need to step away. You need to recenter yourself. Um, I don't think that, I don't think creativity comes very easily when you're stressing yourself out and trying to force something. I know for me, my favorite songs that I've written or collaborated on have just been the ones that have flowed. Um, and it's definitely a practice and not something that I have perfected by any means. But um, I think there's definitely something to like knowing, knowing when to shift gears. Yeah, that's, that's very true. Um, and I mean, in my own experience with, with writing music, I've always, whenever I get into a rut, I always like you, my instrument is guitar. That's my main instrument. So I will set the guitar down and I will walk away. I won't think about music. I won't think about anything else. I will just walk away and go do other stuff, go do, go do chores I need to do, go exercise, whatever. Um, and then once I come back, then I will actually, I'll just, I'll, it, it'll flow. It'll flow a lot more easier. <laughs> like, like mm -hmm. I, I promise you, like some of the, <laughs> some of the best, um, creative ideas I've, I've had, uh, for melody lines or et cetera, have, you know, when I was just doing something mundane, when I'm just like washing dishes or, you know, on a walk or taking a shower, like it's, and then it just, it like hits me in the head and I'm like, Oh, I, I, I gotta remember that. Hold on, hold on. I gotta, I gotta go find my guitar. Hold on, hold everything. Um, but it's just, it's just out and out of nowhere. And I think that really helps. Um, and I also, I also usually try to recommend to people who do come across this, uh, you know, everybody has a favorite style that they like to listen to. Obviously everybody has a, you know, as, as broad as, as diverse as we all try to be, we all have kind of a home genre, I think. Um, but I always advise figure out, you know, what your home genre is and do not listen to that. Go, go and listen mm. to like, go and immerse yourself in ver in different genres. Get weird with it. Go and find some obscure band, um, and go find like some South Korean punk band, and like and go listen to that, and then like and then go back, cause that's, cause you will get flooded with all kinds of new ideas and approaches. That's such a good idea. Some that's not something that I've actually thought of before. I'm gonna have to steal that. Please go um, ahead. But you're you're so right. Um, yeah, I feel like the default is to lean in and listen to, you know, your idols or people you reference a lot. But you're right. If you're listening to the same sort of things, especially in reference to a writing session or when you're working on something, it can it can be really limiting. So that's a that's a really good point. Yeah, and. I have a question that I like to ask artists because a lot of the time it, it, it has two responses. It either, you know, they have to stop and think about it like cause it stumps them or they, I mean, they, they just, they know like right off the, right off the bat. Um, if you weren't doing music, what would you be doing? Oh, okay. You're stumping me now. Good. Um, <laughs> Uh, I mean, I think at this point in my life, I can't imagine doing anything else. Um, I guess, um, you know, there were definitely, I think there were definitely things about production that I enjoyed. So maybe I would be producing, but 
It's very hard to say that at this point in my life just because I feel like I have found my purpose. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of the closest yeah. I can yeah, yeah, get to answering that. that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good answer. Like, yeah, no, that... Um, and kind of the reason that I ask that is uh, to a lot of different artists is because it kind of really makes them stop and evaluate. It kind of makes them realize how, how um, you know, uh, intertwined music has been with their life because mm-hmm. they can't, a lot of artists can't really imagine life without music. They can't, they can't, they've most, I think I would say most artists have never, you know, wanted or tried or thought about doing anything other than that um so it Mm -hmm. kind of makes artists kind of go back and be like wow i have no idea like music has been ongoing in my brain 24 7 for the past 10 15 years whatever i haven't even thought about any other occupation like and it kind of just reinforces how vital um and intertwined music is and important it is to them yeah, for sure. Um, I do feel like I could use a, a couple hobbies outside of music. I think coming back to, you know, that thing about being stumped or having writer's block, having something that is unrelated to go to can definitely be a healthy approach, I think. Oh yeah, oh yeah, definitely. And it can even um it can even, you know, maybe enforce like some of the you know, creativity if you're having a moment of writer's block. It can potentially even help with that. Mhm. That's so true. Okay. Uh let's see. So, um when it comes to you know, skills in the music industry, what do you feel are the most uh, important skills to have when you're doing uh music for sync in particular? Ooh. Um, I think in terms of, I don't want to say the obvious things because I feel like, you know, obviously like there are certain musical skills that you need to have to be able to write music in general. Um, and again, I am still kind of early in my sync journey, so, um, you can take anything I'm saying with a grain of salt, but, um, I do think, at least for me, when I'm doing a writing session and it's for sync, and I'm trying to do this even beyond sync because I think it's, I think it is really important, um, is to be able to sit down with whoever you're writing with and just be able to communicate an intention right from the beginning. Um, You know, what are we writing for? What avenue are we writing for? What sort of style are we trying to go for? Um, I think really like articulating what we're trying to achieve is just really important. And if you can write that down, I've found that if you can write that down from the beginning, it just makes the entire process a lot more streamlined and just like a lot easier. And then, like, you can let your creativity flow without worrying that you are, you know, going to steer too far in a different direction. And then the other great thing about that is um, you know that you're going to have something um, that is, if we're talking about sync specifically, that is pitchable. And you've already front-ended how you're planning on pitching that. So I think that's probably, to me, skill set wise, or or rather, I guess that falls under communication, but I think that that is something that is really important um, to do right at the beginning, whenever I'm working on a song that's for sync specifically. Um, What other skill sets? I mean, I, I definitely think that, and again, this is something that applies, I think, across all music, if you really want to do it um, for a living. Um, I think discipline is really important, too. Um, You know, something I learned early on from mentors uh, when I was exploring sync or starting out was that 
you know, you really do need to be constantly writing. And, um, you know, we all have different schedules. So what that looks like is different for everybody. But I think the most important thing is discipline, whether that means you're writing five songs a week or you're writing one song a week. Um, just having a consistent, excuse me, consistency and being able to stick to a schedule in that way. Um, because sync is a long game and, you know, having a, a sizable catalog is just going to set you up for success. So to be able to do that in a way that's realistic, you have to, you know, really sit with, sit with yourself and say, okay, what, what sort of time do I have to do this and how can I do it in a way that's consistent while still being able to sustain some sort of balance in life. Um, but again, something that I'm, I'm still chiseling away at. So. Yeah, no, that's, that's very good. Thank you for that. Um, and kind of speaking about, you know, uh, balance, how do you balance, um, taking time for songwriting and, and as well as taking time for your own, um, uh, mental well-being, mental health, because I think that's been a kind of a theme, especially since the pandemic, people have learned to slow down and to like pay attention to their mental health and well-being. So how do you as an artist uh, balance your songwriting with, you know, taking time for yourself, you know, taking time for your own uh, mental health? Yeah, I mean, that is so important. Um, and again, like I said, something that I'm still working on. Um, but I think that, you know, something that I just started doing recently, I have a, I like to keep like a pretty strict schedule for myself, but I think making a point to schedule in time to just take breaks, um, and like effective breaks, not just like, cause I think there's definitely a difference between saying, okay, I'm going to take, you know, 30 minutes and not look at my computers or any of my screens or whatever and then there's stepping outside going for a walk connecting with nature actually rejuvenating yourself um and so for me i think being more intentional about that and actually writing it down so i'm seeing it whether that's like on a piece of paper or on my phone and just knowing okay this time every day i'm getting out i'm reconnecting with myself um you know, having at least one day a week where I just let myself relax, tune out. Um, I think just having those, for me, I have to have them written down or I won't do them. And I did make that mistake, I think, especially early on in the pandemic, like you were saying, a lot of people were. Uh, I think a lot of us were scrambling and wondering, you know, what's next? What do we do? Um, and my default is definitely to go into hustle mode and put my head down and just work, work, work. Um, but like we were saying before, you know, that's how you hit a wall. Um, and it's not healthy and it's definitely not balance. Um, and I think a really good realization that I had that has allowed me to, you know, take effective breaks and really try to balance my life out, um, is to remember that not only the old adage of like, it's a, it's not a sprint, it's a marathon, but also just remembering that you have to take things one step at a time. You can't expect to do everything all at once. Um, and that is a piece of advice that I get from really a lot of friends I've had that have been rather successful. That is the first point of advice that they've given me is, you need to focus on one thing at a time or you are going to burn yourself out. So that's kind of how I approach it now. Oh, yes, 100 percent. Um, Anthony, do, did you have any questions for, for Maya? I kind of wanted to uh, take a chance and see if you had any questions, Anthony. Thanks, Eric. Uh, no, Maya, this is um, um, I'm sitting down and I'm, I'm got my seatbelt on and I'm, I'm taking the journey with you <laughs> in so far as this. <laughs> It's pretty interesting. It's it's cool to um, hear your journey and um, your background, and to know that you still just you know hit your goals each time. You know, I really like the um, the time management 
that you are discovering at the same time. That's that is a hard process to do, time management. It and is. It seems like that you, yeah, and it seems like that that you want to do it. Half the battle. <laughs> so yeah, mm-hmm. no, this is great, Eric. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, um, and okay. Let's see. Um, and I think I have one more one more question, and then we're gonna get to this to the music part of it. Um, but and you you touched on it a little bit um, in the past in in the in the, the previous question, but. Um, in regards to getting into, you know, music sync, into creating music for sync, uh, what is one piece of advice that you would have for for artists who are just starting out and just starting to out writing for music uh, to get it placed? Um, this is probably something that many people have heard, but I continue to stand by it. Um, and I think It applies to anything you want to do. Find the people that are doing it and are doing it successfully and are doing it now and reach out to them and just, you know, try to find, try to build those relationships and try to find mentors and people who um, are doing what you want to do and just ask them questions. And I've found that, I'm sure you have too, Eric, that everybody that I've met in, in the sync space, whether creative business anywhere has been very open to that. As long as you approach it in a, from a place of humility and, um, you know, a place of wanting to learn and grow. Um, I think for me, that was the first step. So that would probably be my biggest piece of advice. Yeah. And that's, that's a very good piece of advice. Uh, thank you for that. Yeah. It's, you know, uh, find out the, you know, th- these people who are doing it, you know, successfully. And, and also, you know, and, and I mean, I would kind of add on, add on to that a little bit. Um, you know, be courteous, uh, be kind, be polite, be respectful, do your research mm-hmm. on people as well. And especially when you're reaching out to, uh, you know, music supervisors, showrunners, uh, producers, um, yeah, do your research on, on them um, and get a disco account <laughs> or an Airtable account. Um, don't send don't uh don't send an email with uh the music directly attached Mm -hmm. (laughs) don't don't that's that's a i think you can agree that's a that's a no-no that's a (laughs) yeah and i mean speaking to what you're talking about too i would just say like i'd say any time that you're reaching out to somebody in a professional um for professional reasons i think that you know really focus on how you can bring value to that person and think of it more so as like, I think what's helped me a lot or a good way to think of it is like how you'd want to build a friendship with someone that you'd respect. How would you approach that? You know, um, you're not going to come out right off the bat asking them for something. It's, um, like I said, like approaching things with a sense of humility and, and understanding, I think, I think people really value that, um, at least most people.